Hi friends, welcome to CodeJana and in this video we are going to encrypt our password before saving it in the database. I would like to show you a mistake in our application as of now. Now currently in our routes.py file, we are comparing the email sent by the user. Okay, so in this line, in this conditional, in our login function, we are comparing email and password at the same time. Now this conditional has a problem. So how about I show you before beginning. So let's run our server python run.py. Let's open the page. And now let's try to log in from a user that currently does not exist. So that would be krishna at codejana.com. Password. Now let's log in. Now I wanted to show you this page. This is an error page, all right? It happens when you turn on the debug mode. So let's click on run.py. In this, we have run our app with argument of debug is equal to true so that we can debug our issue, our problems in our code. Now, what happened here is we tried to compare it with the email that is currently not in our database and we did not try to catch that error. So let's fix that issue. Let's switch over to routes.py and we don't need to do anything fancy here. We just need to see if this user exists without this conditional. See, if we try to compare the email provided by the user with an email that does not exist, this particular query is going to return none value. And that's why the app crashes. So we don't need to compare email to email. We just need to see if this user exists or not. And we can do that by simply typing user there. And if that user exists, then we can proceed to this step that is comparing the password. So that's it. That's all we need to do to fix this error. So our server is currently running and I'm just going to refresh this page and resend this information. And yes, as you can see, we have successfully not logged in, but we have got a message that we are currently displaying in this else statement. Our page is not crashing. So now let's move on to our next step of encrypting our password before saving it to the database. So let's do this. As you already know that we have created models for our user. Now we have also created the password field in plain text form. Let's see how it looks. So here in models.py we have created this password model and we have created this password field and we have assigned it as an, a string of 20 characters. Now this string is going to be just a plain text. So let me show you. First of all we are going to navigate to our virtual environment so let's activate that now open python terminal and then from code jana underscore flask import db as always we are going to import this database so that we can access the user model all right so from code jana underscore flask dot models and now we are going to access this models file inside of that we are going to import this user class all right so now i'm going to query all the information that is inside this user class so user dot query dot all so we had created this user with username mythical email myth at gmail.com and the date created. So how are we getting this information? We are getting this information from this REPR function. We are printing out the username, the email and date created. Now I also want to format this date in this video. So it's very simple. You only have to use the strf time function to display the name as you want it to be. So right after this dot date created. Let's access the strf time method here. Strf time. And then in parenthesis, so that would be percent d slash percent m slash and then percent capital Y for the year. So comma, then percent h and percent m for minute and then percent capital S for seconds. Now, as you can see that our string started with this single quote so i'm going to replace these single quotes with double quotes inside our strf time function so that we don't face any trouble there all right so now we are going to close this python terminal and then we are going to access this model again so let's do that 
flask board db and then from code journal underscore flask dot models import this user then user dot query dot all and see now our date looks much better now my next step is to actually show you the plain text password that we currently have saved so let's create a variable user is equal to user dot query dot filter by and in our routes.py file we had used the same filtering method to filter out that user for this one however i'm going to filter it by id now i know that this user was the first one that i created so id will be one and then we are going to bring out the first result that it gets so let's print out the user dot well username for now and yes it is printing out successfully so now when we type user dot password it is going to give us the plain text password and that is not safe so how about we encrypt this password so that the hacker cannot see this password in this format so we're going to do that by using flask bcrypt i'm going to close this python terminal all right let's clear our screen a little now you need to install flask bcrypt library if you don't have it so you do that by pip install flask dash bcrypt and there we go now Please note that I am currently inside my virtual environment. So if you are not in your virtual environment, then make sure to activate it first. All right, so after installing Flask Bcrypt, we are going to instantiate it from our init.py file. From Flask underscore Bcrypt, there we go, import Bcrypt. So after that, we are going to instantiate this Bcrypt class. And by now you already know that we are going to create a variable and then we are going to create an instance of that class and pass this app this flask app as the argument all right so now we have successfully instantiated this bcrypt class now we are going to implement it inside our code so click on this routes.py and here's what we are going to do right now in this register function we are actually saving the password directly from form.password.data this particular value is coming directly from our form that the user is submitting via submit button all right so we are going to hash this password before saving it in this place all right so just after validating the password we are going to hash it so let's say encrypted password now we are going to access that bcrypt variable however just like we imported this app and db variable in the same fashion we are going to import bcrypt all right so now that we have imported bcrypt we are going to use it in our register function so after encrypted password variable let's say bcrypt and now we are going to access the generate password hash method which kite has successfully suggested us right at the top all right so generate password hash and now we are going to send it a password now it is going to be the password entered by the user all right so by now you are already proficient with accessing the data sent by the user from the form and that is as simple as saying form dot password dot data all right so we have sent that password and we don't need to do anything else here now second thing is that now this particular function is going to generate us a password in 60 characters however in our models.py we had set the password of a string with only 20 characters so we are going to change it to 60 characters and now we are safe here now this function is going to generate us the password in bytes form now if you want to save the password in string format then all you need to do is access another method inside of it and then say decode see it's already there and decode it in utf8 format so let's say this one so this is going to generate an encrypted password in a string format that we can save in our database so when we are saving this user and this password we are going to delete this form.password.data from here and we are going to pass this encrypted password variable this one all right so now when this password is saved it is going to be encrypted and I'm going to show you that right now. So let's start our server. 
that's python run.py and thankfully we do not have any error right now let's open our file let's click on sign up and now we are going to create another user so that's krishna and then email krishna at code jana let's say this time password will be code jana all right so i hope the passwords were equal let's sign up okay so it is saying value too long for type character varying now you might have already noticed that i had changed this character limit inside of this password model but it did not see it that way it is because the change was not reflected in the table in our database that is is still the old one so now what we are going to do is we are going to drop our current table and create our database anew so let's do that and this time i'm going to open a new terminal and then we are going to access our python terminal from code jana underscore flask import db and that's it from here we are going to drop the table so db dot drop underscore all and please do mind that this particular command will drop all tables inside of your database so make sure to use correct commands or you might end up deleting your whole database so currently we are going to use this one and now if we try to access our user model we won't be able to do that code jana underscore flask dot models import user and do a user dot query or and see we have an error because that particular user does not exist because we have not created the tables inside the database so let's do that so db dot create underscore all that's all we need to do and now that we have that in our database how about we try to create the user that we had tried before so i'm going to switch to my other terminal here and the server is currently running so no problem there and now we are just going to go back here and type code jana's password and register again so this time account successfully created for krishna okay so we are going to exit out of our python terminal and then log back in so from code jana underscore flask import db code jana underscore flask dot models import that user model then query it as always and as you can see the query was successful this time so you need to exit out of your python terminal then log back in now let's try to access the password of this user so let's assign it by now you're already familiar with filter by so i'm going to filter by id and then grab the first result so user dot password and see this time we are not getting code jana as the password that i saved while i was registering this user we have got this encrypted password now to correct this password it is really difficult by no means it is the safest method but in comparison to plain text it is much safer all right so now what we are going to do currently we cannot log in from this password so let's try that so let's say krishna at codejana.com the password was codejana and it could not log us in because it could not verify that the password the user entered at the time of login was the same one as saved inside our database so this one so we are going to change our login function as well to check for that password match it and then log us in so in our login function right after we had compared this form dot password dot data means password entered by the user and user dot password means password saved in the database so that's no longer true so that's just a simple change don't worry about that i'm going to delete the second conditional here and we are going to access bcrypt methods to check both of those password so let's start doing that bcrypt dot and this time we want to check for the password so generate password is not what we want let's scroll up a little and check password hash is the method that we want so let's do that check password hash 
at this time the first argument is going to be password hash means encrypted password and then the second argument is going to be the password entered by the user so let's do that the hash password is saved inside the user dot password table right and the second is entered by the user all right so that's form dot password dot data now we don't need to do anything else so how about we check it out if it is working now let's check whether our server is running so let's switch our server and yes it is crashed so python run.py great it's working and now let's try to log again so krishnite code jana the password was code jana let's try to enter and yes we are successfully redirected to account page with the successful login message and we are done here now this video was especially for encrypting our password however there's just so much left to do now in our next video we are going to take a look at flask login library it is used to manage sessions inside our flask app so user will be able to log in and log out based on their sessions not by this hard-coded data after that we can restrict some pages to be accessed by logged in users and others by non-logged in users so this account page it must be accessed by only the logged in users right but we are still seeing this sign up page this login page and nobody is stopping us from clicking on this account button to access this account page so we are going to implement that functionality by using flask login in the next video so see you in the next one make sure to subscribe to code channel because we are going to be making this app together so take care bye bye